Principles 12. Um, are there any further speakers? And at this point, Mr Davis, I would invite you to speak on your amendments. Um, Deputy President, thank you. And um, I, I appreciate that this has come back from the Assembly. Um, we have some proposed new amendments and they've been circulated. I will indicate that the first, and it may be just convenient to describe both of them um, first, uh, for convenience. Um, the first is an extension to pandemic declarations to be approved by Parliament. Firstly, despite anything to the contrary in this division, in order for an extension to a pandemic declaration to continue in force, the extension must be approved by each House of Parliament within 30 days after the extension is made. And two, if an extension is a pandemic declaration is not approved by each House of the Parliament, under subsection one, the extension ceases to be in force on the day after the 30-day period referred to in, this, in that subsection. Um, I should say, state for the House that we had a similar provision, but different. It required a special majority uh, that we sought to move earlier, but we think that that, that with this clause, um, it clause 12, that this is an appropriate addition. It provides a significant check, it provides a significant balance. And the community will understand our long-standing concern that the parliament have a, oversight, the parliament have the uh, ability to um, say yes or no to extensions over a longer period. Um, you know, we, we do not accept that the parliament should not be the main body doing that. Um, we accept that democracy should be the, the, to the fore here, uh, that it's all very well having bureaucrats making decisions, but actually at the end of the day, this requires the democratic balancing of a whole series of matters. So a declaration can be made, but the extensions that go on should require that, um, that democratic oversight. The second provision uh, relates to disallowance, and this is different from the earlier one. It is a wider provision. It, it catches more, and it, it makes it very clear that despite anything else, despite anything else, the Subordinate Legislation Act will apply, and that um, uh, that the regulations made under subsection under section 4A of the uh, sorry regulations cannot be made under subsection 4A of the subordinate exempting an is instrument referred to in subsection 1 from the operation of the Act or any specified provision or provisions of the Act, but the following are not required in relation to any proposed instrument: a consultation under 12C of the Act, and b the preparation of a regulatory impact statement. So we make that clear too. Um, and at three, an instrument referred to in subsection one is subject to disallowance by a House of the Parliament, a single House, importantly, and we, we strongly counterpose this with the government's proposal uh, that there be this um, crazy model of a joint sitting, uh, a bizarre model requiring a joint sitting uh, that will uh, likely not provide the oversight and the protections that are needed. Um, there is no reason why these provisions should not be subject to the normal disallowance provisions as far as is possible. And um, that is what this seeks to do. It is wider in its application than the earlier uh, version we moved, but um, I want to make it clear that we regard this as a very important matter of principle. We see that, in fact, the, um, that, that the chicanery and the mechanism that's set up by the government in, um, in the um, uh, um, bill as it currently stands in its entirety is um, not, not up to purpose and will not provide the protections, the checks or the balances that are required. No, I'll do that privately. Thank you. Uh, Mr Borman. Thank you, Deputy President. Whilst I'll be supporting these, I find out about these right now. And that is arrogant and dismissive and does the Liberals no credit. If you want our help, at least let us know these are coming. And I mean, it's lucky that the issue itself means that I have to vote for them. It's just not fair. Mr Davis? Mr Davis? Um, I, I would... Um... Order! Order! Mr Davis has the call without assistance. Thank you. I, 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 I accept the, the process is not ideal. I, I, I'm quite happy to... And I can honestly say that the parliamentary... Excuse me, Mr Davis, without any assistance from Bay 13 down there. Thank you. And, and, no, no, no. And can I... I, I just want to be quite open and say that, that literally these have been drafted 
you know, through a very narrow window. Uh, there's been a number of iterations go backwards and forwards, and literally this has come to the chamber just just now. So I'm 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 not saying that that is the ideal process. I accept it's not, um, but I'm indicating that that I've done the very best I can. Ms. Patton. 